It was over 12 years ago when I first read these words from the pen of Kalamalimana Stephen Percival. The National Organization for the Blind began planning to bring an echolocation trainer to Samoa. Not long after that, a blind echolocation trainer came to set up an echolocation training program. Aloha. I'm here. <laughs> it only took us 12 years. <laughs> Seu and the Ruffled Bird Catcher is a story about a blind girl named Seu and her cousin, Papi, a young boy with albinism, and their struggle to be treated and respected like other children. It is a make-believe story, but it vividly portrays the very real struggle of humankind for freedom from restriction and exclusion, which is imposed on real people in real places. This painting by Kinga Auskamp is called Rainbow Street, and there are a few of us here who cannot see it, myself included. So I will describe it to you exactly as it was described to me. A residential street from above, the houses and yards on each side of the street are sketched out and look as if drawn with a pen or pencil with the most detail at the fronts of the houses and less detail as the image gets further away from the street. The street between the rows of houses has multicolored straight lines crisscrossing down the street that look as if they were that look as if they go from the doors on one side of the street to the doors on the other. What does this scene remind you of? What words come to your mind as you look at this or as it was described to you? Just call out what this reminds you of. Diversity. Diversity. Connection. Connection. <coughs> Anything else? Neighborhood. Neighborhood. Creativity. Creativity, I like that. Complexity. Complexity. The word that came to my mind, and has been hinted at here as well, is community. Now, in English, the word community is made up of two words, common and unity. Or, we can think of it as being invited to come into unity. Now, and here we have just that, a charming tapestry of common unity among fellow neighbors. Someone here said neighborhood or neighbors. But what of those who are blind, like myself, or Tseu, or otherwise uncommon, like Patty, or any of us here? Are our threads to be found among those threads? By whom? Are we invited? And to where are we bidden to go? Those of us who are uncommon. Seu was forbidden from joining her fellow neighbors in common activities. Bati, her cousin, was bidden elsewhere, kept aside, a place to hide. What about ourselves? Where do we belong? And what of our fellow neighbors? Who do we invite? Who do we uninvite? Whose threads do we include or exclude? Who comes and who goes? Blind people and others who are deemed different or uncommon throughout the world are often told no when they could be told yes. No, you can't. You can't do that. You can't be here. But what about, yes, maybe you can. 
Let's find a way. Come with us. Be with us. Can we see past what we think people are and into who they really are? Why is that so hard? What are we so afraid of? We're afraid of the dark, of the unknown. This fear of the dark, fear of the unknown, is mankind's deepest fear, lying at the root of all fear. But why choose fear of the unknown when we could just choose freedom? Freedom to know, freedom to understand, or the freedom to be okay with not knowing. Maybe freedom is harder to choose than fear. But isn't it so much more exciting and so much more rewarding? Many people like Seyu and Bati do realize and do release themselves from fear and choose freedom to find their own way even though others said, you can't. I am the first blind person to teach blind people how to get around using echolocation even though many said, no, you can't. They chose to be afraid of a blind person teaching blind people how to be blind. <laughs> I'm glad you find that preposterous. <laughs> now I teach other blind people to teach blind people, and we teach the teachers who said it couldn't be done. Now let me show you a little bit about what that's like. So I have here, in a place I can't go, okay, I have here a book. And I'm going to use it as a demonstration piece. Now, how can I tell the front cover of the book? Well, it's so well printed that I can actually feel the print. So anyone who handles this book will be able to feel the printing. I can't read it, but I can tell it's there. OK, let me just give you a glimpse of what we're talking about. What is echolocation? What is a part of what I teach? This isn't all that we teach, but it's a part of what we teach. So, those of you who use your eyes to see, close them, if you would. Okay? Some of you don't need to bother, but others, please close your eyes. And I'm going to turn around and face away from you, and I'm going to make a shh sound. And all I'm going to do while I make that sound is move the book toward and away from my face. And you'll hear the change. Just listen. <coughs> right? Yes. Let's have a test. Keep your eyes closed. We'll have a quiz. <laughs> so, I'm going to do the exact same thing you just heard, but tell me, say stop, when you first hear the book start to move. Okay? Just say stop. So I'm going to ease into this. So let's not jump the gun too quickly. I've heard people yell stop before I even start shitting. So. <laughs> Or hundreds 
of meters. This is what our students learn to do. And we will show you. So we can play the video. And just to show you what some of our students are learning to be able to do. Moved it. I did, huh? These skills are things that blind people don't typically have access to. And it's not like somebody comes and then all of a sudden you can do everything. You have to keep working at it. I was just flabbergasted. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because I didn't think that was ever, ever possible. It's not a matter of enjoying it more or less. It's about enjoying it differently. You know, it's, it, it's enjoying it through different vision, through another lens. It's hugely gratifying to us to see the transition, especially when you consider two weeks ago he couldn't take a step on his own. We have shown him that you can make your own decisions. You can do what you want to do. You can go where you want to go. Most importantly, what we have given Rio is hope. Echolocation gave me real connection to my physical environment, which then gave me greater freedom to my social environment. The better I was at mobility, the easier it was to make friends and to do things with people. Everybody has something to learn from echolocation, and that is that we all are capable of so much more than we previously thought. We are really living in a new era of exploring the question, what can blind people see? People often ask me, Brian, do you wish you could see? And my response is, I already can. That's our hope for Hamoudi is that he's going to, as an adult, he's just going to be able to just power through life like he does now, but you know, at a, basically without anybody helping him. People get stereotypes from what they think. So what I do is I show people that they're wrong. And I do my normal stuff. And that is blown to pieces of a bunch of stereotypes. I go out there and I run through them. So go with your heart, get out there. Do something, you know? Don't just sit there thinking you can't do anything, because you can. Like if you guys can see with your eyes, and we um, can see with our ears. Three, two, one, go. This obstacle course is not just poles. It is a goal. And the bigger the goal, the more obstacles you face. And on the other side of that goal is victory. Un Guinness World Record. Stop. Elora. 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 È stato bellissimo vederlo qua. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, you can.
our little touchdown boy says he's not afraid of anything. And it's true. Does the worst blindness come from not seeing, or does it come from not knowing? None remain blind in the light of heart and mind. It's what we choose to see that gives us sight or makes us blind. I believe that no matter how uncommon some of us may seem, we all share a common thread. We do not need eyes to see it because it defines the same heart that beats a light within us all. We don't need to see our own heart to know it's there. This common thread that runs through us all is simply the longing to belong, to be valued, to be counted, to give, to receive, to live freely with one another. That's all. And it's everything. Say you and the ruffled, ruffled bird catcher ends happily, with everyone included, respected, and valued, drawn together by this common thread which a little blind girl helps everyone to see, drawn into a richer and more vibrant tapestry of deeper, common unity. Now, this happy ending is also made up. But if we want to, we can make happy endings real. And real happy endings become new beginnings. For ourselves and for people all around us, just by welcoming, appreciating, and embracing this common thread of heart and soul. We all share it anyway, we might as well share it openly. And what do we get when we bring together common and unity? Community. Community. Come unity. Unity of the common thread, the common heart, the common spirit. Now, maybe I'm just preaching to the choir. <laughs> Yes, but, you are. If, <laughs> but if so, then we need a bigger choir. It's up to us to make it so, to make happy endings into real beginnings, to make community with everyone, everywhere we are, everywhere we go, to let go of our fear and claim our freedom to say yes. Yes, you can. Yes, we can. Together. Ah, it might. Take my eyes, take my soul, rock me naked.
A division of World Access for the Blind. Our vision is sound. Our method is science. Our results change lives. 